Hi, I'm Christopher of ISI. In this video, I'll show you how to use race events to quickly and easily host a multiplayer server with R-Factor 2 Steam version. Before getting started, you'll first need to open the following ports on your router. In the description below is a link on how to port forward if you don't already know how. As each router will vary, please check your router's manual or manufacturer's website for further instructions. This tutorial assumes that you've already configured your router correctly. The first thing you'll want to do is open R-Factor 2 from your Steam library. This will open the launcher. Go ahead and open the dedicated server by clicking on the world icon here. This initiates a series of dedicated server configuration windows. So in this first window, you can leave the top drop-down menu as is. In the drop-down menu below, select the race event you want to run. As you can see, all race events currently available are listed. I'm going to select Race Event Track Day Series from the drop-down. It's highly recommended to assign an administrator password here. This will allow you to administer your server through the UI even when you join as a client. Note, this is not the password needed to join your server. Click on Vehicles to advance to the next window. In this next window, the middle column shows all the vehicles available in this race event. If, for example, you want to exclude a car, here we'll take out the Corvette C6 to demonstrate, highlight the name, and click the Remove button. If necessary, you can add it back by selecting it in the left column and clicking Add. The Force Driving View option below lets you restrict the driving view of anyone that joins the server. For example, cockpit only, or nose, cockpit, and so on. But for now, in this example, we want as many drivers to join the server as possible. We'll leave it at None. Click on Config to advance to the Track Selection window. In this window, we can filter track layouts as well as change the order of rotation. Let's go ahead and filter out Silverstone GT layout. Highlight the layout name and click Remove. If you made a mistake and don't want to remove it, you can reverse this by selecting the layout in the left column and clicking Add. To change the track order of rotation, for example, to put the layout Lime Rock Park All Chicanes at the top, highlight the layout and click Rotate to Top button. Use the plus and minus buttons to move a track layout up and down the list. Here I'll move Moore's up and down the list. In the Connection Type drop-down menu, we will leave everything at default values. This will allow a maximum number of 31 drivers to join your server. The Enforce Name option will prevent users from joining with their nickname. In this example, we are setting up an open server welcoming anyone to join, so we will leave this box unchecked. Next to it, you'll see the Custom Skin Transfer option. This is a nice feature of R-Factor 2, which will make custom skins used by anyone joining your server visible to all others on the server. Lastly, the Weather button in the top right lets you set dynamic weather conditions. Because there are extensive options in the custom weather configuration, we will cover weather settings in detail in another tutorial video. For the sake of simplicity, just leave weather as is for now. Click on Options to advance to the final window. This last setup window allows you to set various event options. First, you'll want to name your server in the Race Name box. This name will show in the Steam Matchmaker server list and in the R-Factor 2 Matchmaker list. Here, I'll name my server Track Day Fun Weekend. To restrict access to your server, you'll need to fill in the password field. Let's leave this blank so anyone can join our server for some pickup races. You can further customize your session in the remaining options. In this example, let's set flag rules to black only, mechanical failures to normal, and race laps to 10. The driving aids allowed options lets you set the level of driving aids permitted. In most cases, you'll want to leave the two deselected options as is. Invulnerability disables all damage, and AI toggle gives drivers the option to let the AI control their car. Damage and AI strength we will leave as is. The minimum and maximum number of AI lets you set a fixed number of AI drivers for all sessions. Although you can manually add AI during a session, when the next track layout loads, it will take its values from these settings. So if you want to leave your server up and running and always want AI on the track, you'll need to set a minimum of greater than zero. Here, we'll set it to five. 
The weather type menu allows you to set basic weather conditions. Leaving it at default will give you a mix of clear and lightly cloudy skies throughout your session. Let's leave everything else at default. Now to get the server up and running, click load track. Keep in mind the moment you click load track, your server will be online in a few seconds. Next, you'll see the dedicated server monitor window. In the monitor window, you can administer your server. The name of your server will appear next to game name here once it's done loading. Notice the minimum 5 AI we set earlier appear in this little window on the top right. This is also where any real driver names that join your server will be listed. Some key things that can be set here are Advance to next session, for example from practice to race Restart weekend, this will restart the session in practice Go to next race, this will load the next track layout we can also add additional AI one by one by clicking on Add AI, or Remove by highlighting the name and clicking Boot. Notice that AI cars are identified in parentheses. This helps avoid booting real drivers by accident. Now if at any time you want to change some options that were originally set when you configured your server, instead of closing the server and starting over, click on Options. This gives you access to the track selection screen. You can take out a layout, for example, and also edit event options by clicking on options again. Here I'll add a 10 minute qualifying session in the drop down menu qualify time. Then click load track again. The advantage of making changes through the options button is that no drivers will be kicked and have to rejoin. However, if you want to edit cars, you will have to shut down and restart the dedicated server. Lastly, let's quickly look at the server we've set up in the matchmaker list. First, minimize the setup window. In the launcher, click on the double helmet icon. This brings up the R-Factor 2 matchmaker. Scroll to find your server in the list. To join, highlight the server name and click the big race button. Another way to see your server is in the Steam matchmaker. To do this, first exit R-Factor 2 matchmaker and close the launcher. In Steam, click on the View menu and then select Servers. This brings up the Steam matchmaker. Here you can see the server listed. To join, you would simply highlight the server name in the list and click Connect. And that's it for this basic guide on hosting with race events. Have fun and good luck all!